Good morning, everybody. This is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. I thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, I send you love. Okay. Let's talk about the rod and the staff, which make up the cross that Christ was crucified on. I am... Oh. I've been wanting to make this a video about the rod and staff for a long time. It's been shown to me for at least a month, maybe longer, but I haven't had the the capacity to allow it to seep in. My brain was receiving so much information for a long period of time, or I just wasn't able to quite pro you know wasn't able to process it. Um, now let's talk about the cross. It, we have a, a vertical line and a horizontal line that make up the cross that Christ, that Christ was crucified on. When we think about that horizontal line anyway in general, that is everything that signifies the earth plane. When we think in terms of that vertical line, it is that line that allows the heavens to connect with the earth plane. When we think about that horizontal line again, there is no end, there is no beginning. It's a line. Yet that line, when folded up, <coughs> excuse me, creates a circle. It is source. God is more masculine in energy. Christ had to embody light, love, that feminine energy, had to embody within Christ to have that perfected state. Christ originated from a perfected feminine energy as of Mary and a perfected energy as of uh, Joseph. Through Christ's birth became perfection of both masculine and both feminine energies. Christ, although was a masculine, it was a very feminine in nature. Love. It has nothing to do with the reality of being a feminine that is here within this 3D matrix here that we live in. The horizontal pattern here is again, like I just specified, masculine. It is the rod. It is that 12, 12 male pattern of our Merkaba. When we're thinking in terms of the vertical pattern, that is the female staff, which combines together, creates the cross. And this is a part of your Merkaba. This is the union between the Hirogamos. And I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. The The distortion of masculine and feminine has gone on since the fall. It was completely, it was on purpose, it was a purpose intent to distort the masses, to create this separation from within us or confusion developed. We lost touch with who we really were, which is why we see so much of this, I don't know who I am. I feel more feminine. I feel more masculine. People are changing their identities, changing the way that they look because they feel a certain way on the inside. It's a lack of balance. 
all of this though is still it's making us bring back balance there are those who are part of this this path it is the Christos Sophia this is the And anybody can choose this path. You can have already decided prior to coming to this earth plane that that's what your purpose is going to be. Or, you know, takes you towards your purpose. You can always change your mind in this reality. Just know that you can always change your mind. Wherever you are at this point of your life, you can stop right here. Or you can change your mind by focusing on your heart and what it is telling you to do. The hero, this is part of the, when we have really merged the 12, 12 and the 13, 13 field, the both masculine and, and feminine energies within. This is the definite upgrade of the 12 masculine DNA with the 12 feminine DNA, which hook up and make a 24 DNA strand, which also doesn't have to end there either. You are you have received the hero gamos or you are part of the hero gamos this is the the wedded garment of god and it is the white robe of the one it is uh, the hero gamos refers to the risen christos sophia which is the embodiment of the inner hero gamic union between the human being and the divine the hero Gamos is the full resurrection of the body to the eternal light of Christos, which is the cosmic Christ consciousness. In these bodies, you have returned yourself to energetic balance, neutral in the unity field or the zero point energy. The light body being is one with God. This is the concept of law of one. I uh, so when we're thinking in terms of the hero gamos here, that divine sacred marriage, that union between two divinities. You have the mother and the father God. This is the ultimate alchemy in relationship to, well, you know, 12. And how I've been talking lately now about the 12 cell salts. And then I think 13, the 13th month needs to take place the 13th moon cycle 13 signifies jesus in all of his perfection which is the feminine aspect uniting 12 and 13 together um i was going to go into this separation that they that the masses have conditioned us to believing in just know that if you are feeling that type of separation still 
Keep going. Keep going in love. If you are feeling it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are not doing it. See it as a sign that you are waking up to that type of mentality. That you are really aware that I still have some separation within myself. And therefore I am still seeing that separation within this reality. Therefore I can continuously move forward. When we are, when we become the, and I really have so many, so many tabs open here. When we become a part of the Christo Sophia, you know, we are, because there have been so many architectural structures here that were actually meant to help keep us within our, our own personal alignment. You know, the planet has its own fields that are supposed to send out electrical impulses to keep us safe, to keep us in alignment, to keep us growing in our own divinity, of course because of the control systems that are, are set in place as well, they know where all of all these structures, if it's, you know, just like the, the Great Pyramids or Stonehenge or all the other things throughout history here that are very significant, it's not enough. It's not enough. And of course, the amount of people that are being born on a daily basis, it's not enough. When we take this this role on, we are bringing in that light. We become one of those temples. The temple. We are a temple, a pillar. We are a structure, a grid system, a per our own personal grid system, just like the earth is her own personal grid system, but it's not enough. We become a source of our source in allowing light to come through us, therefore be projected outwardly as well. And You know, all of this comes into play with the threefold flamed heart that I spoke about. I don't know. How long ago was it? Last year? Last summer? Um, even longer? I don't know. I spoke about the, the Mother Art Principle. The Trinity Wave. This is a part of the, the third level of, you know, because there's a level for everything. There is a, every time we are within a certain level, there's a level, there's levels within that level. And we can always build on it. So, for example, you can build your wings and become a type of earth angel. But you can keep going, or you can stay there with your wings and, and do the job that is within that level. Like we have different levels of teachers. You have teachers who teach kindergarten, teachers who teach um, grade school. Then you have... Uh, high school and college. It's the same aspect of that. You can stay as a kindergarten teacher or you can become a college professor. 
you may have decided prior to coming here, but because we are given free will and we have the, the ability to evolve of our own choosing, we can go as further as far as we choose. So we're building our wings when we first start this process of that sacred marriage. And then we go to the crystal lotus heart, which is a part of that threefold flame. And then we build on the sacred marriage of the hero Gamos, where um, the liquid light of the risen and the embodied Christos principle is ignited. When we have re come to that perfected state, and I'm still working on this, so I'm not there yet. I am in this process right now. This is that perfected balance. It is the hero gamic union. of being both masculine, both, both feminine, and having the law of gender working for you. There is no separation now within this reality. You are at a perfect state of God and goddess within yourself. And that is our true destiny. That is our true purpose. And whatever we receive as a result of that true union is only the blessing that's associated with what we are doing. And so I hope that I have brought a little more clarity. You know, Christ light or the crystal Christ consciousness here. This is something that has always been. The Christ, Jesus Christ, was a representation of that light that had to be brought here as a demonstration piece. Yet to tap into Christ consciousness, we have to be able to rise above all of these levels of heavens all of these dimensions and bring it back down within us. And that, therefore, that light is continuously being emitted. The idea I don't know what I'm saying here right now. You know, even the the word Christ, Jesus Christ, his name has been distorted throughout throughout history as a purpose on a purposeful tool to keep us suppressed to our true light and what the true light signifies. Christ is really um, crystal consciousness or crystal. Um, and it has a tone throughout it, actually. So if, you know, I, I'm actually thinking about not using Christ. Because 
it's been so embedded within our DNA that until it's been healed within our DNA, the wording can still su suppress an individual. Christ, Christal, Christos, you know, we're trying to, those who are of the light now are trying to bring back its original tone. And, of course, in time, I, I will know what I am supposed to use. I will know. And this is actually, now it makes me remember the animosity that I had when, regardless if I was being spoken to about God or Jesus, I used to really shut down. My mind, my body, my heart really put up this, this wall. And if you were really in tune to energy, you would, he you would feel that I was pushing all of this animosity and just junk towards you because I felt so spiritually attacked by those wordings. And of course, it is also that I, I knew that who was using those wordings were not that they're bad people, didn't understand the true concept of what they were speaking about anyway. We always, we really know within ourselves if we are really in tune to how we are expressing, how our body is, is speaking to us when we are uncomfortable, we understand we can open up the doors to greater understanding when we are more in tune with it. I was shut off a long time ago. I would feel very uncomfortable. I would lash back or just close off within myself and never asking myself, why is this? Not seeking greater understanding. So now, of course, that I am open, I'm open to receiving answers. And I guess that's all that I have for this a moment anyway. And um, I hope it, it kind of helps. I know there's, it's not much. It, this video it isn't much, but I found it very interesting for myself to have this information given. Even though, you know, it's, it's understood. But um, there's, you know, information is information, regardless of if we truly understand the concept of masculine and feminine energies. And I guess the, the Rada and Staff thing was a concept that I truly didn't understand a long time ago. And it's taken me some time to receive that information, you know, months ago, to finally being able to <laughs> speak about it properly anyway. And the 12 and 13, I, ho I hope that's new information. Although you know that 12 is a 12, 12 anyway, is a part of the Merkaba activation. But it's more so about breaking 
the illusion of separation. So when we are actually creating our Merkava and balancing the energies within ourselves, we are actually breaking the chains of control and separation between identities, between sexual energies or energies in general. And allowing the 13th, 13th feminine energy to exist within us within complete balance. So I hope it makes sense. And of course, I'd love your input. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the love. I do also accept um, donations through your generosity. And through your generosity, you are able to assist me in doing what I do. I am, for those of you who don't know, I I tried, I tried, I began writing a book over a year ago. And I could have already been done with it, of course. It could have taken me only a month to complete. But life got in the way, and then I felt this need to just stop. It is about my personal experience, for one. But the first time that um, God ever, God spoke to me that he wanted me to, God wanted me to write for the cause, I stopped my writing. And yet, my writing is is about my personal experience. So my personal experience is still going. So I'm okay with putting it off for a little while because I'm still going through this process. But at the beginning of where I began writing my book, it completely turned. I made a complete turn from where I thought I was going to where I ended up being. And that's completely fine for myself. It, it's probably going to be a shocker to those who end up reading it. So everything that you guys give to me in, in, in a form of your love and kindness in that energetic exchange, it goes back to what I put into myself here or into not just myself, what I do personally here and therefore give to you guys. Regardless if it's for me, when people are donating out of the, the graciousness of their own heart, and you give it to an influencer, you know, it's, there's so much work, so much time that we put into this. And of course, this is, this is where our journey is. This is where our heart really is. This is where love really is. So of course, we are, In no way, shape, or form in lacking when it comes to that. And hopefully not in lacking any in air, any area in general. But the what you do is definitely received. I guess what I should just be saying. It is definitely received. And I want to always say, I want to say, I say thank you to those who actually give an energy exchange in that form. It helps out more than you than you could ever understand. It shows your your kindness. It shows what you think about me and and what I do or whoever you're giving it to. I, I know that their heart is receiving your love and just know that whoever does give to me, I don't take it lightly. Even when I get the likes and the comments on my, my videos here, you guys have no idea the amount of love that I receive from something so small. If I get one subscriber, one new subscriber a week, I am like, so grateful for it and there you know grateful isn't 
a good enough of a word to describe how much I appreciate it, really. Because we throw around those words so frivolously. But I'm saying thank you, and I'm taking a very long time to say thank you about it to all of those who are always giving of their heart. Whether it is liking, commenting, subscribing and sharing, or through money exchange. I thank you. This is Christy. Much love, health, and healing your way. I am bringing purpose to your life. Take care.